welcome. I just wanted to do, actually remake, the other tutorial because people were complaining first, it was too long, and second, I sounded boring, apparently. So, um, this tutorial will be how to make a bootable image out of either Windows installation, which in this case it will be, or any other file you think should be bootable. So, we're going to select create image from files and folders because we're not going to burn it. Go to disk layout. And now we're going to take this folder. But like I said in the previous one, we don't want the folder we want inside of it. So we're going to do control and then tap A, which selects all. Then we're going to drag it to the root, or you could also select add selected. Now, since it's there, Again, extra, this is just the building pane. Then we're going to click on advanced. Click bootable, make bootable, and click the little uh, file search. Scroll down to the file bootable no emulation.img, which you should, which you can download from the description. Um, and then actually we're going to now pick the destination. Where do we want it to be? I'm going to pick desktop. And I'm going to change the name to Windows XP Service Pack, but I'm going to add underscores. Hold on. Okay, that just took a little bit of time. I was able to do it. Okay, now let's hit save. Now, before we build this, and ask some some questions. See, so it says it looks like you might be trying to build an operating installation disk. It's fine by me, except you have some conflicting settings. Now, it'll list the settings which it proposes to change. Now, I have found that most of the settings it suggests is, it's just suggested works perfectly fine. So, I'm going to leave it as is, meaning I'm going to let it change the settings to this. I'm going to change. I'm going to go ahead and click yes and let Image Burn change those settings. Now, here's the ISO volume label. That's whatever the volume label is what, if you burn it to a CD, what it will be called. Like with an installation for Windows XP Home Edition, it would be Win XP underscore Home ED underscore then the service pack. So I'm going to just change mine to Windows XP Service Pack 3, abbreviated. I'm going to hit OK. So first, then go and analyze and make sure that the settings are correct. I'll be back when it finishes. Okay, so it's now finished. And, well not finished, it's done analyzing. It's found 6,687 files, 178 folders, and it's determined that the content type is an operating system installation, which is correct. And here's the settings which has changed. Uh, here's the volume label, Windows CP typo. Anyway, well, you can actually change that. Before you burn to a disk, you can change that. It's calculated the size, how many sectors. So now, we're going to hit OK, and it's first going to fill up the buffer. Then it's going to actually start doing it, so I'm going to come back when it finishes. OK, it's just completed, and it has driven us And it has just given us a message saying that it did successfully complete. Okay, so, um, since it's done that, now just to prove, actually, the uh, .mds is actually a settings file. You don't actually need that. You can delete that. Right click, delete. It's only 4 kilobytes. Now the actual ISO image is over here. Also, you can um, delete the uh, you can delete the files used in the creation of the ISO if you don't want to keep them for um, archival purposes. I'm going to do that because I already have these files backed up. <coughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. So, um, here's your ISO. Now to prove that it is bootable, I'm going to load up a uh, virtual box, hold on, and let's select Windows, and actually let's select a, a Kubuntu 
11.04 to show you that it actually is bootable. I'm not going to install it over Kbuntu, but I'm going to start it up and insert the ISO. Hold on. So now I have taken the ISO, I've mounted it, and now I'm going to hit reset. <coughs> and it should actually say setup is inspecting, actually pressing the key to boot, setup is inspecting your hardware, and now there you go, it is bootable. Now actually there's one more thing I want to show you, um, what it actually looks like, hold on, what it actually looks like when, just power off. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you what it looks like when it is, what it looks like when it's, if it was burned to a disk and put into the disk tray, what it would look like with the auto run. Hold on. Okay, so we have our Windows 7 virtual machine loading up. Here it is. And I'm going to navigate over to the uh, my computer and hopefully since I matched it it should show up here it is uh, and here's what we called it Windows CP Service Pack 3 and actually since this is an ISO now since uh, the virtual machine thinks it's a disk you can't change it within the virtual environment but you can change it um, <coughs> if you edit the actual ISO image not in a virtual machine Actually, if we um, hit install or run program, that's strange. Hold on. Okay, here's what happened. Windows 7. Okay, it must be something to do. Oh, I know. Um, you cannot install or even run the installation of an older version of Windows through the GUI of Windows 7. I know, that's strange. Um, but if we do open autoplay, here's what you would get if autoplay was enabled. It's a CD drive, whatever your CD drive is, Windows and the, you know, name. And then since there's no, since there is no option to click installation, it just has browse because Windows 7, Windows XP is superseded by Windows 7. So they're figuring why would you want to install Windows XP over Windows 7? Cough compatibility, cough. But anyway, so that um, pretty much finishes up my tutorial. Hope it wasn't too long, and sorry for the background noise, it's the neighbors and dogs. <laughs>